turns out I'm thinking about bouldering. Oh my God, I would just steal in the daytime and do comedy at night. And then the comedy was like, it still wasn't making any money, but people were starting to call me up for $50 gigs and shit, so I must be doing something, right? I said, fuck it, let's dive into this motherfucker. And I got, <laughs> I got arrested for shoplifting a tent. Did I ever tell you about that only? They I busted me on the way out. Of a Kmart. In like Iowa or? Idaho. 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 What did you steal? A tent. <laughs> I wouldn't even steal it. I used to just take them and try to shoplift return. And they busted me. I've been doing it for two years. They bowled all over the tri state area. And out of all places, they got me in. You Idaho. just grab it and just take it to customer service? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and say, my brother Eddie Bravo gave me this. Give me the cash. And they give you cash or store credit. Wow. And then you get like $89 of store credit, $100 of store credit. You get $80 of shit you need, and they give you 20 bucks in cash. That's how small I was thinking. When I was just on the road in the beginning, I would just buy oil for the car, antifreeze, I'd buy a tire. Fuck it. <laughs> you know, when you're on the road, dog, you got to push shit together in that car when you live in that fucking car. So you're thieving as you're doing comedy. I'm on triple runs. <laughs> thieving. I thieved all the way till 96, 97. When we moved, we robbed that safe. We robbed the safe. And uh, <laughs> one, one last job. <laughs> one last job. And it had like $900 in it. So we could pull okay. it there. I, I used to be a altar boy. And when I believed in Catholicism, I was like, my life was, my stepdad was so evil. I'm like, fuck this life. Get me to heaven. So I'd go to, I'd go to, I'd be an altar boy. I was like, go, get me to heaven. Get me to fucking heaven. And um, then at around 11, uh, the priest asked if uh, we, me and my friend Matthew, we both did it. My best friend growing up, we were both altar boys. He asked us out for ice cream. So he was trying to make a move on us. He was like trying to get a little date. And we asked his aunt if we could go because we wanted ice cream. Fuck yeah, that worked. It worked on us. Like we want free ice cream. But then the aunt said, okay, but I'm coming. I'm good. So she had like a little suspicion about him. So she came in cock block. We got our ice cream. And then shortly thereafter, I, I realized, Mike, I thought we were everybody was Catholic. I didn't know there was Jews. I didn't know there was Muslims. I thought everybody was Catholic as a kid. The our Catholic holidays corresponded with uh, uh, with like different strokes: Christmas, Easter special, Halloween special. I thought everybody was on the same page. I thought we were all Catholic at eleven. And then once I found out that there was like all these Jews and Muslims and all these other religions, right there I started thinking, wait a minute, this is all bullshit. And then by 12, 13, I was like, Phew. I was super atheist and got into speed metal and started writing satanic lyrics and shit. Then I decided, me and Matt, we totally changed. Now we're evil satanic kids. Like, let's go back and be altar boys and fucking rob. No, at first, at first, <laughs> the church, it was, we had a neighbor, neighborhood church, Our Lady of Pilar, right? They Anybody could walk in during the day in between mass and, and old ladies would pray and there was these metal boxes. They put in like a dollar or five dollars or coins and shit on these metal boxes. So we were like, how could we get that money to play video games? We were addicted to Defender and Miss Pac-Man and shit. We were addicted to video games and, and candy bars. So we needed money for video games and candy bars. So we would go in there on a, on when people are praying and when there's no one in the church, we'd have we'd have screwdrivers and shit. We'd open it up and we knew that we're gonna close the doors at 8.30. So we would go in right before they close and we would hide under the pews with our fucking screwdrivers and shit. We would hear the, the janitor lock up all the doors. They would lock up. And you could push them out. Like, if to leave, it's easy, but you can't come in. So as soon as everyone was gone, it's like 8.40, we rise up from the pews, and we open up those metal boxes, and we take the change and the money. And we, we that wasn't enough. We'd go after, and we'd leave, and we'd play a Defender for, for like an hour, a couple hours, get some Reese's uh, cups and play some Miss Pac-Man. But we won, and we're like, you know what? You know where all the big money's at? It's when we'd go to church and the, the 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 guys that were collecting the money, they would go back into the backstage of the church where you, we used to be when we used to be altar boys. So we're like, that's where all the big money's at right there. So me and Matt goes, let's fuck you. We're not too old to be altar boys. Let's go. Let's see if let's offer our services. So they let us. They let us be altar boys. So we were like. We we're writing satanic lyrics and we were making uh, he uh, speed metal and shit and we're in cat we were like going through the, all the motions and shit just so that when they would close up they close up the church we would take off our gowns like in the backstage 
and hide in the closets. And they thought we'd love to go by, Father. And we would just hide in the closets behind the gowns and shit. Everybody would leave. We'd come out. We knew they, they keep that the collection money from, from that church. And we'd take about 15 bucks or whatever. Go did play. They, did they leave it there? They right? left it o- overnight. Oh so we God. kept doing that over and over. And then finally they left a little letter that said, so we would we would pretend we would leave and shit, but we would be still in there hiding in the closet, wait for you know for everyone to leave. We can tell, and then we'd come out like little fucking rats, and we'd go and take like 10, 15 bucks. And there was a note that said, "Please, whoever's taking this, they couldn't figure it out. So where's this fucking money going? They couldn't figure it out." And there was a note that said, "Please don't take our money no more." So we took a little less. You know, we didn't want to make it that all. We just wanted to play video games and shit and, and get Baby Ruths and uh, almond joy and shit. And then finally. We did it again. We got greedy. We got greedy. We we pretended like we left. We're in the in, hiding in the get where we put all the gowns, and the priest. They figured out it was us. They figured it out. So we hear his fucking footsteps. He starts opening up all. There's a bunch of closets, and he, you could tell he's going through all that shit. Me and Matt are going, oh shit, oh shit, he's coming. We're fucking busted. I didn't know what the fuck to do. So as soon as he opened up our closet, went boom. All I could think of was going, boo, we scared him, we got you, we got you. And then we just ran out the door, boom, we scurred away, never never to return. And we looked back and he was right there at the door just looking at, as we ran down the parking lot and we were gone. <laughs> I went, boo, we got you, we scared him. Bam, we were gone. That's a true story, son. <laughs> used to rob the church (laughs) I got a lot of stories like that (laughs) my mom didn't have any money she made 150 a week she had three kids oh man we didn't have any money we had to fend for ourselves (laughs) fucking hilarious I never looked at I never looked at you from that direction. Clipping oh, churches man. as a young man. <laughs> <laughs> you ever clip a church, Lee? No, I've, I've, I, I went through a, like a shoplifting phase, but nothing, not a church. I robbed the bar mitzvah once. It's one of the most embarrassing things I ever did. You know, I still think about it once a week at night. Did you take it from the bar mitzvah boy? The no, kid? I think I'm from the bar mitzvah guy from 2002. No, yeah. I, no, I thought it was like the uh, like the I was, bar. Or something. I was bartending, and they had a back room. And I was at a, out. I was at a country club, and it was. I used to be a banquet bartender, a union banquet bartender, and they had fucking suspended me <laughs> for close to nine to ten months. They had suspended me because of uh, tardiness and not showing up and not calling. As a bartender. As a bartender in New York City. Okay. And I'm robbing them blind. Everybody as was, a bartender. Yes. Oh yeah, of course. Everybody's <laughs> robbing them blind. <laughs> Every job I had as a kid. It was all about how, yeah, many, how much how, you could rob them. Exactly. It was fucking terrible. Every job. Terrible. <laughs> terrible. <laughs> and for peanuts, like it was just garbage. Yeah, we just I, wanted five dollars. What are we talking about? Uh your your bartending gig where they So they sent me gig. to this fucking so I'm out of work guys and I'm just stealing for a living. I'm just waking up in the morning, going for it. Whatever. I'm putting a suit on, I'm going in buildings. <laughs> I'm a fucking creepy motherfucker. So I, you know, somebody would get up to go to the bathroom, I'd rob their office, you know, whatever they had, the, the, the petty cash box. Oh, it was terrible. <laughs> they brought, fucking terrible. I think of all that shit. So that I got a call one day, hey, you're back in the union. Are you available Saturday? I'm like, fuck yeah. They're like, this country club needs a bartender. First day there. I didn't even wait a week. First day fucking there is a bar mitzvah. And they're putting envelopes. I don't know what the, what's in the envelopes. I'm just sitting there, and they keep coming back to me with bags of gifts with envelopes in them. And I'm just putting them back there. And finally, I see a couple come in with a kid, a Jewish kid, and the guy takes money from his wallet, cash, and puts it in this envelope, licks it. And when the mother comes out, he gives it to the mother or the cat. I don't know who the fuck it was. So when they would stack up, they'd come to me and go, put those envelopes in the back. I just saw it, and I remember what color it was. I opened that envelope up. There was fucking a deuce in there or something, 300 bucks. I go, wait a second. I got 100 envelopes here. I hit the jackpot. I'm just going to walk out of here with the fucking envelopes. That's how crazy I was. But I took 20 of them. I ripped them open, and whoever had a check, I just threw it in the garbage. 
and whoever had cash. You didn't even let them keep the checks? Fuck no, they were ripped open. They're going to know that somebody ripped them Fuck open. Fuck it, at least there's a check. Fuck it, what are you going to do? You gotta, there's got to be a victim there. And I fucking took the money, it was like a thousand bucks, and at the end of the shift I just left. And I threw away the ones I had ripped open. <laughs> What a creepy fucking thing to do. That's how much of a creep I was. And I was a grown man when I did that shit. 